so uh, as we see the product discovery so product discovery basically uh, uh, describes the iterative process of reducing any kind of uncertainty around a problem or any kind of idea to make sure that your right product gets built for the right audience so your product discovery offers the product teams higher confidence in their path forward and it also uh, acts as a foundation for successful implementation and the launch phases later on so you should be focused on having a solid foundation of product discovery so your product discovery is uh, or at least should be mostly about the problem space so whenever you are referring to the product discovery it is pertaining to the problem space and alignment and the research are the are focused on prioritizing defining and understanding the overall problem space so it is uh, the necessary good uh, groundwork before you can move forward into the solution space so your product discovery is is fundamentally focused on the problem space which helps you to uh, start uh, working uh, on the elements of alignment and uh, research so as we said alignment and research are more focus on prioritizing defining and understanding the problem state uh, problem space and it is the necessary groundwork before we move forward into the uh, solutioning part of it so identifying the right problem uh, space uh, to explore and generally understanding the problems is uh, extremely valuable uh, input for any of the organization or company so there, there are a variety of research techniques that can be employed to ensure a clear understanding of the problem. Uh, so how or what is the problem statement? So we should be able to clearly understand and articulate it across, right? So observing users, analyzing the tasks they execute can certainly provide more clarity around the problem and how a solution might improve the user's effectiveness and efficiency is a important aspect as well. So this can also lead to a usability engineering uh, engineering practices that focuses on improving the usability factors of in, in, in a, of uh, interactive systems so we should always focus on uh, the, the solution space uh, when we are uh, coming uh, about uh, determining which solutions which is worth which is worth persuasion so we should always uh, think about that so uh, obviously, as we say, uh, whenever you're trying to uh, do the groundwork, uh, uh, laying the groundwork, we should always discuss the problem space, which is like, what is the problem? Why is it a problem? Why is the word solving? So that's all about problem space. So in that, we should talk about the alignment and the overall research part of it. And whenever you're referring to the solution space, we should uh, talk about the research techniques. We should uh, talk about the user observations and the kind of task analysis which you're trying to use. We should talk about the uh, usability engineering. We should talk about the customer experience and the overall design. So in the solution space, we should discuss about the ideation part. How are you going to uh, do the ideation? What are the, uh, what are the next steps in terms of creation of the uh, solutions? How, you, how are you going to validate those solutions? And finally, if there are any kind of refinements which are required and uh, getting it aligned to the problem space uh, in terms of the issues which your 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 team or your stakeholders are facing so so your alignment uh, and research belongs to the problem space your ideation creation validation and refinement belongs to the solution space and they need to be interacting with each other uh, to ensure that how we provide the solutions which are worth persuasive right so you can always refer to uh, this article a practical guide for the agile team by Harbig, uh, and you can always uh, read uh, this link at a later point in time for further more details. Uh, so, uh, uh, as a part of uh, as a part of uh, this understanding the customer slash user user journey, we should uh, look into the uh, uh, the aspects of uh, uh, how are we going to uh, look at the scenarios and what are the kind of expectations uh, which uh, these scenarios have, right? So, so in this case and in this example, uh, Sara basically she wants to purchase a gift for a friend who lives in a different country, and uh, so that's a scenario uh, that is put across. So we are trying to understand the customer slash user journey of Sara, uh, who is wanting to uh, 
uh, send a uh, present a gift uh, to a friend who is in a different country and uh, her expectation so what she wants uh, uh, from from the portal or, or from that e-commerce platform so that is that is there in form of her expectations so she want to have a online purchase she want to ensure the quality items are there she want to ensure a reasonable prices are there for the items and she also want to have a timely shipping and returns allowed if if, if if required right so these are the fundamental aspects which she is looking across right so uh, embracing a value driven approach to the product management uh, requires a clear understanding of customer needs and the desired outcome uh, so as an another approach to understanding the customer uh, and and validating the product uh, assumptions is to create a customer journey map right so that helps and represents the end-to-end -end experience uh, that customer have with a provider and their product through the touch points and interaction right so whenever you are discussing about a customer journey map uh, so a customer journey map basically visualizes the services the customer experience and it communicates the overall journey and customer's experience at every stage so this is an example of customer so the uh, this slide basically is an example of customer journey map it uh, it communicates the journey and the customer's experience at every stage and it uh, it also identifies the key uh, service interactions and for each of these the motivations and the kind of questions uh, which you have right so there are uh, many ways to visualize the customer journey the simple maps basically uh, includes the number of steps uh, of the journey the durations the touch points and the service interaction the kind of personas the kind of service experiences the service provider teams and the kind of roles who will interact with the service consumer so there can be various ways by which you can have those customer journey maps being created across